Hi everyone, Jenna here. Unfortunately, I recorded this, you know, layout step by step, but somehow when I stopped the recording, something happened and it didn't record basically. I lost the recording. So, but I wanna so much to um, give you a little bit of explanation here what I did. So I'm just gonna try to show the layer and, some, and show some things to you. Um, and I will do another layout step by step. Um, we're going to start here at the channel, uh, a series of, you know, layout step by step for beginners, uh, just the layouts. So expect that coming soon. Okay. So let me start here. And first I want to show what I did with the pictures. Okay. But because I flattened them, um, I'm going to have uh, to show the pictures that I did. So let me grab my pictures. Okay, so first I have two pictures here that I got started. And you're going to see that one uh, is modified, but one is really like artsy. And I produced these pictures with an app called iColorama. Very good app. I have a plan to do many... Um, tutorials with this app is a fantastic app but the reason why I have two is if you notice here on this one his face and hands are not so abstract as this one so I wanted the effect of this one but I wanted to show his um, hand better or face and so what I did in the layout I created a group and what I did I put one picture on top of another and first the top one I reduced the opacity so I could line them up. So you see there that we just line it up like, like so. And then I go here, go back to 100%. And then what I did, I masked this one. And I went here and I just went with a Photoshop round brush. And a round soft brush and in black and I just removed here and his arm and I could see his hands better okay so that's what I did with the layout the picture but let's see how I start building the base here so first I used one of my magic gradients and the reason why I have this um, lines here is because I grabbed here the um, Photoshop rules here just to show that I was talking about the rule of thirds when we divide a layout by thirds and we have these points of interest in the page. So I centered my layout in two of these points. Um, you don't have to follow this um, rule of composition compositions are here to be broken but it if you are studying on this it's always good to practice and this is a nice way to to do that and photoshop gives you that outline so i went ahead and i put my um, gesso texture here and what i did here i put on the vivid light blend mode and i went on the blend of mode here and I detached here with option click and then you detach just to remove, if you see here, you, you know, remove that black uh, there. Then it came the time for the picture. So remember, I had the picture already masked and with his face showing. So I just planted the, the picture there and um, I started to, I put a mask and I started with my water blends brush to bring him back. So in order for us to blend better and to make this more cohesive, something that I, I do is to put a layer underneath and a, a layer on the top. And I also brush more. And you can see here, I brush around it um, with other brushes. If you're in the brush and you go to the option, and you see I went to the picker and then I brush and then I went with the water blend stamps to create this kind of water 
watercolor edges here. I also clipped a gradient uh, here from my um, gradients um, here. If you see, it's clipped, so it's, you see here. So I went to soft light and and I also did curves. And if we go to the curves, you see that I put here the red and I changed the red a little bit because you can see that because his shirt is red. His shirt is a little more red because I did something that I'm going to show you. And greens, this picture had a lot of greens, so to make the greens a little brighter and things like that. So I modified the curves a little bit. You can do that by color or you just put RGB and you do a, a regular curve. Clip to the picture. Then we have, you know, brush work, brush work. And uh, that was it inside this folder here. Then on top of the folder, I put a um, exposure. I clipped to the pictures because I, I needed more brightness. It was a little dull. So that's what I did. So I bring here uh, elements and I'm going to brought elements and I brought elements from my Bloom collection, Artsy Good 1, Artsy Goods 1 and Artsy Goods 2. I'm going to link all them. And um, here on this one, if you, I disabled this momentarily, you see this is how it is. And I, of course, put a layer mask and uh, masked a little bit just to be more spontaneous. Okay, it should not look like I stick that element there. And I put some more, I use my acrylic. Um, I think was no my mix me just set brush and I brushed some yellow here um, and no this is another thing because I put this element here from my artsy goods and I masked with let me show you this is the element is a watercolor stain and I mask with uh, one of the acrylic brushes or no, the mixed media brush. And then I thought, well, I need some yellow here. So that's when I brushed with the same brush. I just picked the color here and then I brushed. Yeah, so now we started putting some elements. So let's go back there. I put some elements and a sticker. And I started to wanted to give some movement. So I put this um, loop here and the loop on the other side. Remember, we are doing this, you know, working on this points here of interest. And I'm also trying to balance the layout, right? So I don't make this part heavy. I have to balance the layout there. So this is another thing to bring more. So you're bringing elements of repetition, which is a composition as well. So this is the um, paper here. And I wanted to see here, let me make it bigger. What I did here with this uh, paper, I got a soft round brush in gray and I just brushed the corners and I clipped to the paper. So you see that gives that contrast that to the paper and it gives, you know, it lifts the paper. Uh, to the edge of the, the layout there. Uh, here. Then we put another element there at the top. Again, creating the balance there. And I want to show uh, what I did here. I did a command. is command. I think it's command option shift E. Which attach, make, uh, no, um, merge all the layers and make a copy at the top. So then you have a copy of the layout at the top. Okay, which is this one here. But what I did here is I created a feather um, selection, which I go here with the selection round. I give it a 15 pixel feather, which is going to feather the edges, right? And while it was selected, I create a layer mask. So then um, what you see here, enable layer mask. 
what you see and then i invert it because at first was white in the middle then i invert command control i and what this causes here if you see it causes the edge of layout that to be darker because before it was you know not calling much attention to the front everything was kind of the same so a little bit of contrast here very subtle and you can you know use the opacity and see what you what you want and what you don't want this is something that i like to use a lot it's the old style of carbon that we would sometimes ink the edges of the page to give that more you know attention to the center or just just to you know make the things more um, full of texture and things like that so this is something that i i love to do so i hope the next time i don't have issues technical issues and you can see so look for this layout process for artistic layouts something that i want to talk uh, also in terms of the picture when i uh, record my layouts usually i i don't plan layouts i plan the pictures that i wanted to make pages um, I let the process happens to uh, I let the process happen to me really organic because that's the pleasure that gives to me because art is spontaneous and you can use your creativity and it's something for you to have fun. If I'm having to study and create sketches and everything just to do one layout, I would never do a layout. And something that I want to talk about is also the kind of pictures that I use. I love a lot to use these pictures that my son is i'm taking the pictures you know from my point of view so many people think that with artistic layouts you don't don't do that you don't need to have a story or things like that because you do that in more traditional layouts you have text and everything so i wanted to let you know that you know despite i'm not having particularly text and a, a lot of journaling in the layout itself the layout itself, it, the layout itself is done with very intentional things to convey the message and the feeling that i'm having um, i like to give my perspective my perspective is the eye of the person who is seeing him grow and to see him going through a world that is not made for him and doesn't understand him sometimes as my son is autistic so these are all related right so when i'm here maybe i'm not writing a lot but i give hints of magic and hints of messages for him as you have a joyful heart you know is the process of becoming who he's becoming now as he is becoming a preteen and going to high school and all these things the colors the texture um I like the blend I love the blended look because it's kind to me as emerging as as I'm painting and because I like to paint in you know in regular days and um, so I hope this is just um, uh, an input of what I was telling when I recorded this and I wanted to for sure to include this here for you to be free and don't think a lot about what you have to do or if you have to write something but make the process be enjoyable for you so i hope you enjoy and again i hope next time i don't have technical issues and we can go you can see me actually doing the the layout but more to come and i appreciate all of you that are watching this don't forget to subscribe and like and if you have any questions let me know in the comments thank you